Today, I'm going to be talking about episode 22 of season 17 of Deadliest Catch, and this is season 17's season finale. The boats that are going to be in this episode are the Summer Bay, Wizard, Time Bandit, Northwestern, Cornelia Marie, and Saga. The captains are all talking about two of the main canneries being shut down, and also just talking about how rough their season has been. It was probably one of their roughest seasons in a long time, because they were battling storm after storm. A lot of the boats are really struggling to find crab. A lot of the boats are going to be moving their gear close to the ice pack. Some of the boats are going to lose their gear in the ice pack because the ice pack has been moving so fast and swallowed up. And when that happens, there's a pretty good chance that you will not recover your gear ever, or it might take a long time to recover it. At one point in this episode, the wizard had gear in the ice pack. They are going in it, and the ice pack just started getting more and more thicker for him. So they just couldn't move, and Captain Keith decided to abandon the pots and try and come back to him at a later date to recover him, or something along that line. All the boats are moving out of the ice pack flows and kind of into areas close to it, but technically won't get hit too hard by it. And then another point in the episode, Sig was fishing in one area and he had gear farther, I think was northwest or something like that, or northeast, somewhere around there. He was hauling in his gear and he was getting not much opelio crab, so he calls Jake up and he's like, you want to partner up? I've got prospecting string you can go check a couple pots on and see how it's going and relay the information to me. Jake was like, yeah, we'll do that. Jake moves to test out the gear and the first pot he hauls up has about 150 opelio crab in it and then the next one has 430 opelio crab. So Jake sets pretty close to six strings and, and it's possibly going to create a nightmare later on in the episode. And then the Cornelia Marie, after they loaded on their gear, they move farther down south. A lot of the smaller boats, they can fish in 90 fathom water, but the bigger boats can fish in uh, 100 plus fathom water. They're going to set around the fleet in the south, but they're going to set in about 110 fathoms. We'll see how their gear does later on in this episode. The Time Bandit, he's moving his gear to a goalie since it's so much deeper. The ice doesn't usually freeze over, so he's going to set his gear in there and he'll have maybe a string or two up closer to the ice pack. Summer Bay, they are out at sea when they hear a call go out to the U.S. Coast Guard for an injured crew member on boat. The deckhand that was on the other boat that once worked on the Summer Bay was Todd, and they were worried that it might have been him that got severely injured. And it goes to them and they are talking about what had happened. So then the U.S. Coast Guard cancels the call because the crew member on that one crab boat passed away from being severely injured by being crushed by a pot. After that, they got word that it was a former deckhand that had worked on the Summer Bay. It was Todd. The Summer Bay crew and Wild Bill has had a really tough season this year. They've lost three former deckhands who have worked on the boat in the last year. They lost Malin, then they lost Nick McGloshan this season, and then they lost Todd, who had been with them for a season or two. The Summer Bay has had a really tough season. Wild Bill, he's talking with the cameraman, and he's like, I, I can't do this right now. After all the other captains find out that a crew member died on that one crab boat, they're all bummed, and they're like, we're like one big happy family up here. We all know each other in some form, and it's a sad day when a crew member on a crab boat passes away. Then the time bandit is falling in a pot. All of a sudden, the line gets pulled out of the coiler, and from the block, the line starts going back out, and it starts pulling the coiler off the deck, and the crew has to hold on to it and get the line out of there so it won't go overboard. They get it dealt with, and then they try it. The motor broke on the coiler, so for a while, the crew is having to coil the pots by hand. The Northwestern gets to the gear where Jake had set. They haul in a pot. And that pot is tangled up with Jake's gear. So Sig is not happy with Jake and he calls Jake and he's like, why did you set my gear like this? And Jake was like, because if I go too far in one direction, then I could be on the opelio crab or I could be off him. So that's why Jake did that. And 
Sing and Mandy decide to move their gear like three tenths of a mile away from where they currently are. All the Pelias catch boats, they start getting into different areas where they had set their gear and they start doing really well and they're all getting really close to topping off their boats for season 17 of Delius Catch. The Cornelia Marie, they start going through their gear and they're getting 500 to 800 Opelio Crab in each pot, so they're happy about that. The wizard starts hauling in their gear and they're getting breed up 500 plus Opelio Capra Pot, so they're happy. The Saga, they're gonna top off their tanks pretty quickly with the area that Sig helped them find. The Summer Bay, they finish off their season and then they start heading for St. Paul to do an offload and Wild Bill calls the Harbor Master to see if it's okay to get the boat into harbor and the waves are just massive. So Wild Bill tries to get in and he went through the breakers and he's like, I'm gonna give it a go and he's going. And then a giant wave comes sneaking up behind them. It's taller than the wheelhouse and it just smashes them real good. Luckily, the crew was all inside. I had not seen that much water come on a boat in a long, long time. Wild Bill is calls the harbor master and he's like, I'm gonna abort this and as he's turning around, he gets smacked on the port side by a giant wave and pretty much rolls Summer Bay, but luckily it rights itself and then Wild Bill has to turn it to face the waves and go out into the Bering Sea and wait for the seas to be calmer. Luckily, the Summer Bay crew made it safely. There was water all over the inside of the wheelhouse and everything was just strewn about from being rolled over and it was one giant mess. It shows the boats finishing up their season, grabbing their final pots and stuff. While the Time Bandit was fishing earlier on in the episode, they see the Tempo C, which is another crab boat is right by them. They ask them if they have a motor for their coiler, which they do. They meet up and then they get the engine for the coiler. They get it fixed and get it up and running and they start hauling their gear again and they're doing really good. And later on, the Tempo C that had helped them. They had gear up by Jonathan's gear up near the ice pack and they can't get to their pots. Those pots that Jonathan lost, he's had them for 30 plus years, so he and the crew kind of performed a memorial for the crab pots that they lost. They were raising the pot launcher for every pot and dumping bait over the side of the boat to honor their pots and say thank you. And it shows pretty much all the boats finishing up their season and calling it quits. After the crew hauled in the final pot, they put a box of fireworks on there and Jake had his wife Jenna and one of their sons and he lit off a box of mortars for them to celebrate the end of their season. Then it goes to the Northwestern, and the Northwestern throws their flaming puck for final pot of the season. They nail it, and they finish their season. It starts going through the captains talking about their season, and that is how episode 22 of season 17 of Deadliest Catch ends. I hope you guys enjoyed this review of Deadliest Catch. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit the bell icon down below so you can be notified when I upload videos. Also, please share this video with your friends and family. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and don't forget to smash the like button. Thank you guys for watching. And if you ain't dreaming, you ain't living. Don't forget to dream big.